Hello and welcome to the CX Files for 21st September 2023. My name is Mark Hillary and I'm in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I'm Peter Ryan back in Montreal. Uh, been about a week now since I've been home from Asia. And Mark, I am very proud to say that the jet lag has more or less gone away. It's been a few wake ups at four in the morning, but anybody in our industry knows what that's like. And uh, certainly you've got to use that time uh, you know, constructively. So getting up early, doing a bit of a dog walking and catching up on some reading is always a good way to while the hours away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Philippines is certainly uh, a long way and a big time change for you. Um, you know, I used yeah. to go between London and Singapore every two weeks. And so I definitely had to try and work out how to just consistently live with jet lag at that time. You know, the funny thing I found, though, is the longer the jet lag, the actually it's it's more it's more straightforward to deal with. Like, I actually find a 12 hour time difference between Montreal and Manila much easier to navigate going and then coming home than, say, a five hour time difference going to London, which I, I do, as you know, quite frequently. Um, I don't know what the reason is, but you know, it, hey, you know, we're we're lucky we get these opportunities. And a few, a few nights that you fall asleep a little bit earlier watching TV and waking up a little bit earlier, it's it's a small price to pay. But you know, Mark, we're we're really fortunate this week on the pod to have a, a very exciting guest, and that is the one and only Beza Tacola. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Beza and what she does well you obviously you are because you edited the podcast but going into the editing process um just as a bit of a backgrounder Beza and I connected on LinkedIn two or three weeks ago and I noticed that she's a, a medical doctor based in the Washington DC area and she decided that medical practices and clinics were facing so much strain, so much overload in terms of their ability to manage both frontline and back office processes that was impacting patient care. She felt something had to be done about it. And we know that these are strains that we hear about in every country. You know, in Canada, it's it's at epidemic proportions. We know in the UK, it's very, very problematic. And apparently in the United States, this is exactly the same. So Beza picked up the uh, the bull by the horns and has started her own BPO that's focused on the healthcare space. And being a clinician, as she said, being the managing partner uh, responsible for administration of a medical practice, she learned firsthand exactly what these strains were and how best to ensure the, the top patient care by looking to set up an outsourcing operation that would be able to take away some of the more administrative processes, some of the more administrative type functions, and allow the practice, the practitioners to focus on what they do best, and that's looking after their patients. Yeah, that's excellent. And the, the US has seen um, the growth of many medical facilities um, in, in the last few years, I mean, especially during the pandemic time, um, you know, that tries to take people away from the emergency room environment. Uh, if you've got a broken arm, then it's clearly something that needs medical attention, but you don't necessarily need to be in an emergency room to, to get that fixed. So, uh, you know, that there's clearly a big, big push towards trying to offer um, better services. Um, and cl clearly what you're talking about here is actually trying to like fit the back office onto that kind of frontline improvement in service as well. Yeah, this is exactly it. And as as we went through our discussion, which I anticipated was going to be maybe typical CX files, 10, 15 minutes, we ended up speaking for quite some time. And it, it really struck me, not just how well thought out Bayes's business model was, how she'd identified a problem and identified how best to fix it using a third party solution format. And she had also really demonstrated to me the, the energy and the passion needed to make this work. Healthcare is not an easy sector to work in right now. We get this. We hear this from country after country around the world. The strains on resources are tremendous. And it doesn't matter what the, the funding model is. It doesn't matter if it's a public system or a private system, it's very hard to make it work. And with more entrepreneurs like Beza who are coming to the table with practical solutions that can help not just the, the large HMOs and the large corporations manage some of the different business processes within these 
massive bureaucracies, but also that are focused on developing the right solutions to aid and assist frontline patients, even as Beza said, getting in touch, being able to phone a medical practice and get the telephone answered, you know, that's going to help so much in terms of morale. It's going to help the staff within the clinics who can focus on the elements of being good clinicians and making sure, as Beza said as well, that burnout can be avoided. Yeah, that's excellent. Well, why don't we go straight to the interview and hear about developments in the healthcare industry then? Well, this week's The CX Files takes a very interesting industry-specific turn where we look at CX and we look at outsourcing in the healthcare space. And to help us do so, we have got one of I think one of the most exciting guests that we could have on the CX Files, and that's Beza Tacola, who joins us from her home in, Beza, I want to say it is Virginia, or am I in the right state? Yes, you're right, in Virginia. Okay, well, I, I had a 1 in 50 chance of getting that right, so uh, maybe I'll be heading over to Las Vegas to try my luck on the roulette wheel. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I desperately need it. But in, in all seriousness, Beza, you join us today and you are what I think is so, so cool, the founding partner and CEO of Suture Healthcare Operation. So I, I suppose a logical starting point would be to find out from you a little bit about what Suture Healthcare Operation is and how it came to pass. Absolutely. Um, Suture is a, a really a, a concierge or boutique BPO, um, or more of a supportive um, agency for healthcare um, organizations. And um, our, our essentially, it was born out of need and necessity, an honest, uh, an honest opinion here. And essentially, it is a BPO model where we are designed to support healthcare organizations in their operational, day-to-day -day operations, essentially, our operational needs. Um, and this is um, not only on a CX contact center level, but also on a clinical level, um, should that be needed. Um, so that's that's basically what Suture is. Now, you said based out of necessity. And one thing that I think we desperately have to put on the table here is the fact that you are a medical practitioner. You're, you're a doctor yourself. And you were feeling firsthand a lot of the strain that is is really, I think, coming to pass in terms of the healthcare industry right now. Is that not the case? That's absolutely correct. Yes. Um, so a little bit of background about me. Uh, yes. I am a practicing gastroenterologist. Um, I've been in practice now for almost 10 years. Uh, I've been in the private practice industry since uh, completing my medical training, honestly. Um, and in, within the private practice, I, I've flourished um, as, a, as a medical practitioner and a clinical researcher, actually. And really over the past five years is when I, I really blossomed into the um, management side or the practice management side of the, uh, of the medical practice or the business side. And this is where really I learned the operational wheels or, or operational guts of the practice, really. And this is where we learned all the, or where I learned all the, the intricacies and the challenges that the practice was having, not only my practice, but also my colleagues, my networks. Um, and really the past three years, I, I've been in an executive role within my practice as a lead uh, of our executive committee in managing the practice. And this is where I was very intimately involved in the operations of the practice. And along the way, um, there was a lot of frustrations, uh, as you could imagine, being in that leadership role, trying to deliver medical care, um, but not being able to do so, especially in the setting of COVID, a, a lot has happened in the healthcare industry, uh, where the staffing uh, was burning out and, and some were able to come in, some were not able to come in. And that created a lot of friction within the operations of the practice. And uh, in attempts to continue our operations throughout the difficult times, we've had a, a to, to consider outsourcing uh, to continue to run our operations. And it's a challenge because there's not a lot of outsourcing options that truly meet the needs of the practice. And the misalignments along the way that we've learned was 
purely just a misalignment and not truly um, seeing eye to eye what our operational needs are and what what can and cannot be supported. And this is where I, you know, myself and my partners decided to say, is there something that we could do here? Um, we can bring the the needs element here as well as the BPO side and being able to capture that financial or cost savings ability uh, and still bring um, uh, efficiency into the medical practice. Um, so that's basically where we decided, all right, let's sit down and, and craft a, or design a model where we can support a medical practice. That's that's great stuff. And congratulations and kudos for actually having picked the ball up and run with it like that, Beza, because to my mind, this is something that so many different medical practices or clinicians can, can, can really benefit from what you're talking about. And the healthcare industry is one that has been an um, that has been a good target for outsourcing, but the complexities and the compliance required to manage the the different aspects of healthcare, because let's be frank, it's not just like one silo, it's many, many different silos within that space. You know, I, I, I would love to boil down something that you and I talked about as we prepared for our interview a, a few days ago. And you talked to me a little bit about some of the pressures that your patients were feeling. And when it comes right down to it, the patient is really the primordial element of any healthcare operation. Can you talk a little bit about what the average patient, whether it's in the United States, where I am in Canada, or perhaps in other parts of the world might be facing right now as they look to try and get clinical care and, and where an outsourcer can potentially alleviate some of those pain points. Absolutely. Um, and, and this is, uh, you hit it right, right there, which is patient experience has been in my personal opinion, deteriorating. And I, I, I would believe that patients would uh, voice the same opinion here. Um, it, my perspective, the biggest challenge um, from the patient experience is access. Patients being able to access um, their medical teams is becoming increasingly difficult. Um, now, access and, and patient care, in my opinion, begins with the first attempt at the patient reaching out. That's, you know, that, that's where the patient is saying, I need help and I'm going to seek it. If at the point of contact that breaks down, I think healthcare has broken down at that point. Um, it's really, it's, it's becomes the uphill battle begins for the patient from the minute they pick up the phone to get help. And that's where really I would like to focus my efforts right now is let's start at, at alleviating, alleviating the pain point there. Let's pick up the phone and, and guide them in the right direction, put them in front of the people that need to help, uh, that are, that can help answer their questions. The other element um, next to patient access, I would say, is clinical workflow. I think that's also important. And I, I was really um, uh, thinking about how um, this part is very important. And this is where I'd say the clinical workflow begins at the point of contact. Not only do you schedule the patient, but then once the patient is scheduled, they have to get in the clinic, um, the orders might be made, and then after the clinic uh questions might come in. So there's a lot of clinical decision-making or contact points that need to happen, multiple layers, as you said, along the journey of the patient experience. And there are currently a lot of layers of the patient journey that, that end up happening and multiple contact points with the patient um, that have broken down. Um, so this is really where I, I see ourselves at Suture being able to to jump in and address each layer. Maybe we we might address one item in, in one layer and maybe something else. Maybe the practice will do it um, efficiently in certain layers. Um, and this is where I think it's a, a, a partnership with the medical practice, not necessarily offloading work, but really yeah. working hand. Because let's be perfectly frank, when we're talking about healthcare and we're talking about organizations like Suture that can come in, we're not talking about low value, high transaction work. We're talking about functions that require a particular skill set, that require a particular level potentially of certification. So a partnership model is really essential to make sure that the clinicians, that the medical practice, and that the partner are truly aligned to make sure that they're able to maintain that high level of standard. And 
you know, I'll, I'll just throw it back to me. You know, uh, look, growing up, I can tell you, it was not a question that the the clinic or the doctor's office would answer the phone. When when I was a little one or my brother, we were always getting sore throats, or scraping our knees, and we'd come home, complain to our mom. Mom would just call the doctor's office, office up, yeah, bring him in in two hours or come in first thing tomorrow morning. It was never an issue. But what we hear, it doesn't matter what the country, almost everybody is complaining about a crisis in healthcare, and so much of it relates to that, as you say, that front end access, the ability to actually get somebody on the telephone, the ability to get an, an email answered. And then you bring a whole new layer of complexity into it when you talk about the fact going to the doctor's office very probably is going to result at least in going to get an x-ray or some blood tests. And the requirement for someone to manage the coordination between the medical practice and the source from which these tests or these x-rays potentially are going to be done. It, it really beggars belief the extent to which that outsourcing has yet, I think, to truly penetrate the surface of healthcare because there's so much good and so much benefit that could result from it. Absolutely. And that, that's exactly it. I think we're all just starting to scratch the surface of what, what can be achieved here. Um, and, you know, at the I myself have pondered if it was me in my practice, would I would I bring an unknown into this? Um, it's tough. It is a tough one for for um, the healthcare industry to to relinquish control um, of of that patient experience because it really does directly speak into that medical practice and into that physician. Um, and it, it, I, if there are people, you know, physicians uh, on these podcasts listening, it, I'm sure everybody understands you walk into the room and the first thing that we all say, and myself included, is, is I'm sorry. It's, it's, it is so disheartening to just come in and say, you know, we, we just couldn't, even to get to this point must be so frustrating for you. Um, and we spend, honestly, a, a good portion of that visit instead of addressing their medical concern, just trying to address the things that don't need to be addressed in that room. Um, and this is where I, I think there's definitely a lot um, that we can address within that within that outsourcing arena or within the CX experience, because the CX experience is, it truly is a journey in healthcare. It is not just a one-time contact. You, you, you could not have said it better than, than, I could have imagined how you just put it. That That is so brilliant. And let me ask you then, in terms of Suture and what you've been up to, what has the response been from the prospective client so far? What's the reception you've been getting as you've been taking Suture out to the marketplace? It, it's fascinating. Um, I honestly didn't know where Suture was going to lead me either. I just thought this was a need that, that needs to be out there. Uh, the interest is phenomenal. Um People are very positive about it. Honestly, I'd probably say curiosity is the right word. Many people are curious um, and, and approaching with, tell me more, which is an awesome feeling because um, that is not a absolutely no. It is, it, what is this thing? What, what can you achieve and what can you offer? I, I think that says a lot. I, I would agree with you. That does say a lot. And the fact that, that people are open, they're willing to have the conversation, that they're curious, it speaks to a need in the marketplace that obviously a company like Suture is coming in and filling. And I've always been a big believer that the future of outsourcing and the future of CX delivery is going to be on niche subject matter expertise capabilities, which truly I think fits and 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 behests exactly what you've attempted to found and what you seem to be taking to the market with with a great deal of interest and a great deal of momentum that's building. So talking a little bit about the company itself, and, and you and I, we, we connected on LinkedIn, and it, it's just one of those things where I'm, I was like, wow, this is an interesting profile. This is an interesting company. I've got to learn more. And I'm sure that the listeners will be very much feeling the same way. So can you talk a little bit about Suture as a company, maybe a good starting point of that would be to talk a little bit about who you're employing. What's their background? What's the typical agent profile of somebody who works at Suture? Absolutely. Um, Suture has, uh, I'd probably say, two very distinct approaches. There's the management level, because um, we do 
our, our services are so um, tailored to the practice that we do need that advanced level of management, um, being able to handle the account and and be essentially the, the trainer to the trainees uh, at the end of the day. Uh, we have to have more of a information transplant from, from the management level to create structure. The, the other layer is our, the actual BPO, boots on the ground. Um, this is the agents that are picking up the phones and, and doing the, the hard work. And um, this, uh, agent or, or, or um, agent uh, pool or profile is uh, based out of our, our main hub that would be based out of Ethiopia, um, an emerging market, as you know, very well. Um, and our, our agents are very young youth, uh, highly educated. Uh, we source our agents ideally in the healthcare arena, depending on the skill that is needed. The, the um, contact center skill set is going to be a little bit different than, say, uh, a medical triage or nursing triage. Those are going to be a different level of skill set. So we source based on the need. Um, and the, the main point that when we um, talk to the a HR group um, when we're sourcing, it's language proficiency. The, we are facing patients and clients, and we expect communication to be our priority. Outsourced or not, the goal of any medical service should be timely and effective communication. And we do prioritize communication skills as our priority. Um, so young, educated, um, specifically within the healthcare niche, being able to carry the vocabulary that the, um, the clients would, would speak as well. So that's where we are. It's interesting because my uh, very good friend and a frequent guest on the CX Files, Rod Jones, who is based in Johannesburg, has had tremendous experience out of Ethiopia and done a lot of work there. And one of the things that struck me, and you're, you're bang on, it's an emerging market, is um, my limited exposure to Ethiopia has been traveling through the airport at Addis Ababa a number of times. But I'm really taken by the, the skill levels in terms of not just the, the linguistics, but also the, the the customer service skills and the inherent, almost instinctive customer service skills and the willingness to go the extra mile amongst people in Ethiopia. Yes, actually, um, I've heard that um, my, my partner would, would be more than happy to speak into it, too. Uh, he's been in the BPO industry for, for many, many years, uh, over 15 years. Um, and that's exactly it. What brings clients to him and keeps them coming back has always been there's something about the culture that is um, that allows people to feel comfortable. And that's where, to me, it, it's that is the 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 secret sauce, I suppose, of, of why this yeah. could work very well is that caring nature and that humbleness, I think, will go a long way in the healthcare industry because that's what patients need, the compassion, the empathy. Um, and I think that's, there's definitely something here. So then just to wrap up, Beza, can we talk a little bit about what's next for, for Suture? Where do you see the company going in the near, medium and long term? My goal, uh, my dream um, would be to be transformational. We need to change the healthcare industry, change the standards of patient care and patient access. Um, you know, my one year goal is pace, pace myself and do it right. Um, our, our internal motto with my partners is, you know, we have a, a small subset of operations or, or clients um, that we'd like to take on and dedicate ourselves fully. The next year is truly in perfecting it um, a, as we move forward. And then the, the following years, after between years two to years three, we would like to start scaling it appropriately, um, and depending on the need. I think we have to uh, put our ears to the ground and, and truly feel out where's what's the need here and be able to be flexible and agile with the, with the market as well. So I think the market will tell us which way it wants to go. Um, but we have to show up. Yeah, absolutely. Showing up is 90% of the game as somebody told me when I was starting out after a university and, and I tend to agree. And 
just in terms of being transformational, I can tell you after having chatted with you twice now, I, I can totally see that in the cards for you and for your team of people. This is one of the best stories I've seen in a long time from the perspective of outsourcing and CX. And as somebody who's got personally an acute interest in the healthcare space, I truly value what you're doing. And I wish you every success along with the entire team at Suture. Thank you so much, Peter. This this is, uh, I mean, it's wonderful and an honor to be on your podcast and having this conversation. Trust me, the honor is ours. <laughs> and I have no doubt that we will have you back on in the very near future talking about the immense success that Suture will continue to, to snowball. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the CX Files podcast. We really appreciate your feedback and suggestions. You can reach myself, Mark Hillary, or Peter Ryan via LinkedIn. Please also leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast provider, as that helps more people to find us. As always, we'd like to thank Chris Haig at Traction Media for the CX Files graphics. See you next week.